this one because you're moving in the positive direction. The t equals zero. If you're moving in the negative direction, of course, it would be the piston pi over three. Okay. So we know that x of t equals 10 centimeters times the cosine of 3.6 radians per second, and it's approximately so 3.6 times t. plus 5 pi over 3. Okay? Now, we want to know when does it reach equilibrium? Well, you just translate that Solve the equation. Zero equals ten centimeters times a cosine of three point six radians per second times t plus five pi over three. Well, very easy. Okay. Uh, if you've done this sort of thing in trigonometry. And if you haven't, it's not all that hard. You'll understand it when I show you. Okay? Uh, you know, ideally, everybody in the class knows how to do this. And we just say, that's all you do. But I'm going to need to show you. That's okay, it just means we can talk less about other things. And that's not your fault. Uh, if the curriculum didn't show you that, it's on the curriculum. Um, Unfortunately, you're still responsible for learning all the physics. Uh, makes it a little tougher on you. I've seen it before. It's just been a long time. I don't remember exactly. Yeah, well, I'm it saying in general. And if you've seen it, then you recognize it right away. And that's fine. So we have the equation. means that the cosine of 3.6 radians per second times t plus 5 pi over 3 has to equal zero, right? Okay? So, uh, why does the cosine equal zero? Uh, cosine of one in next one? Well, we can say that First of all, 3.6 radians per second times t plus 5 pi over 3 would then have to be the inverse cosine of 0 or 2 pi minus the inverse cosine of 0. For the same reason, you, know, you got that symmetry. Uh, your, your angles go like this. Okay, we had angles that looked like this, right? one in the first quadrant, one in the fourth, okay? As this angle goes around, this angle goes around because they have to be above and below the x position, right? So if you look at the reference circle, what is a cosine? Zero. Either uh, extreme? No, cosine's one at the extreme. Cosine's the x position. Again, you got your unit circle. Oh, here's your x. Out here, that's a that's a zero angle. You know, pi equals theta equals zero position. That gives you a cosine that's equal to one. Over here, it's equal to negative one. It's here and here. At the 
cosine of zero. Okay, well that means this is either pi over two, which is the inverse cosine of zero, or three pi over two. Well, now you've got an equa you got two equations that you can solve. Okay, of course. could also be 2 pi n plus the inverse cosine of 0 or 2 pi n minus the inverse cosine of 0 because you go around that circle forever. Every time you go around the circle n gets to be one bigger. Okay? So in general, your solution is three point six radians per second plus five pi over three is two pi n plus pi over two. parts 2 pi n minus pi over 2. Those equations are easy enough to solve. You get t equals... Okay, now pi over 2 minus 5 pi over 3. Well, what is that? Common denominator 6. That's 3 pi over 6 minus 10 pi over 6, right? correctly, it's this over 3.6 per second. Now, I'm not writing the radians on these angles, so I'm going to suppress the radian here, but it's really there for reasons of hopefully we're starting to sort out. Okay? Yeah, of course, 2 pi is 12 pi over 6. Um, so you can, you know, get, get further into the arithmetic of this. Um, I'm going to leave it the way it is, though. In this case, it's 2 pi n minus what? Okay, we're going to have, again, negative pi over 2 minus 5 pi over 3 is negative 3 pi over 6 minus 10 pi over 6 is negative 13 pi over 6. Now see the units come out in seconds because you're dividing by reciprocal seconds. So you get an infinite number of solutions, okay? Now, the first time, at equilibrium,
I'm getting something. But n has to be 1. Because n is 0, you get a negative time. Okay? And that just comes about because you're subtracting this from that. I don't want to take time to, to explain all that. But you can see that n has to be 1 because n is 0, you get a negative time. The first n that gives you a positive number. Okay. So first time we equal m equals one, so t equals two pi minus seven pi over six, which is five pi over six. Okay. And five pi over six is about 2.6. And 2.6 over 3.6 is a little more than 2 thirds. Okay, a little more than 2 thirds. So I'm going to say it's about seven seconds. Okay? Meaning you're moving from here on the reference circle to here on the reference circle in 0.7 seconds. Now we I said earlier and you can work out the numbers the period of this motion is around two seconds. So it's making less than half a cycle here. So it's not unreasonable that you get 0.7 seconds, okay? You always want to do that with a solution. You want to check it against other parts of the solution to make sure you have some kind of consistency. That's reasonable consistency. Over here, next time to equilibrium, you're on this side. because you're going to be down here. And you should get something pretty darn close to two seconds. Okay? Because it's moving pretty fast when it goes through equilibrium. And I think you'd have to have n equals two here. Matter of fact, I think you need n equals three. Why n equals three? Well, because thirteen pi over six is more than two pi. Okay. N equals three because what I had to do to reason out that n equals two, I did again without thinking about it. So I just made it get more ahead. Here. This has to be positive. Okay? This is more than 2 pi. So you have to have more than 2 pi here, and the first n that gives you more than 2 pi is 2. So it's 2. I had it as 2, I changed it to 3 because I, my, my brain got in a loop that it went in twice. I'm not really thinking about it. I would have found out when I tried it. Okay, so n, n equals 2. If, if, I, if I'd have done that, I'd have found that this is 2 point seconds or 3 point seconds. Um, and that wouldn't be reasonable. Okay, next time, so you get this. So 2 pi times 2 is 4 pi, of course, which is 24 pi over 6 minus 13 pi over 6 is 11 pi over 6. Be something close to 1.7 seconds. Okay? Because you have another half cycle from here to here. Now, let's see, 11 pi over 6 is going to be like 5.7, 3.6 into 5.4, 
that would be 1.5, so 3.6 into 5.7. Okay, it cuts out about 1.7, give or take a little bit. I think it's within a tenth. Okay. Then when you work it out accurately using your calculator, you're going to find uh, that you know this and this differ by whatever period is, which is two pi over three point six decimal seconds. Okay, it's a little less than two seconds. So uh, I think I, 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 I I'm pretty confident that I'm right to the tip for but Don't trust my mental arithmetic because I don't know. <laughs> Work it out. Also, when you write down your solution, just an incidental comment. Three point six seconds, two significant figures, right? So don't write down forty eight significant figures for your time. This is only accurate to within about three percent. Okay? So don't make, don't write this down as something that would be accurate uh, to, you know, one millisecond out of the age of the universe. Okay? That doesn't make any sense at all. So be, be, be aware of that. You know, we'll deal with that a little more formal. Uh, okay, so just an example how you do this. Now the principle is simpler, similar to what you did with linear motion, where you had the x of t equals you know, at squared plus v of t plus x and like all that stuff. Okay? If you have that and know the position at two different times, you can evaluate the two unknown constants, v naught and x naught, right? V of zero and x of zero, whatever you call it. Okay? Here, the situation is the same, but the function is different. It's not a polynomial anymore, it's a sine or a cosine function. Uh, but you have two unknowns, just like you do with linear motion. Okay? The unknowns here would be your amplitude and your phase function. Tells you where you are when you start. Okay? So, uh, since we spent the whole time on this, I'm going to give you some fairly significant problems to look at, you fit them into this model. And think about the physics of it. If the acceleration keeps decreasing as you push the equilibrium point because you have less force as you push it. Okay? But velocity keeps increasing more and more slowly, giving you this velocity curve that does this. Okay? And how does the velocity relate to the position? How does all that relate to the picture of circular motion. We've actually developed fairly well on that. Okay? Make sense? Okay. I'll try to phrase problems. I'm going to phrase a couple of problems just to get used to this language and I'm going to give you some, some problems out of the Okay?